A very warm afternoon to all the participants. I hope you're all doing great. Uh, we'll just wait for a couple of minutes so that the other participants could also join and maybe then we could get started with the presentation. So welcome all to the Marmore webinar on the topic, impact of increasing interest rates on GCC banks. Uh, before we get started uh, with the webinar, I would like to take a few minutes to introduce uh, Marmore. Uh, Marmore is a wholly owned subsidiary of Mercus, uh, also known as Kuwait Financial Center. Uh, Marmore provides cutting edge consulting and research services across the GCC region with focus on capital markets, banking, strategy, economic and industry studies. Uh, we've published more than 200 reports on various topics and we constantly are in the bigger to serve our clients to help their businesses. I'm Ajay and I'll be moderating uh, this current webinar and my colleague Shankaran Narayanan would be sharing his insights on the topic. Uh, I would say that today's topic is coming at a quite timely uh, juncture with the US FOMC meeting scheduled uh, to end today. Uh, and the whole world is keenly watching over uh, the US Fed's decision as uh, it is likely to set the context for the rest of the year, especially after considering what has happened to S SVB and Credit Suisse in the past couple of weeks. So against this back backdrop, considering the aggressive rate hikes which the US uh, Fed has undertaken in the past year uh, and the subsequent actions taken by GCC central banks, uh, we felt it's very important to understand and analyze what has happened in 2022 and what could be expected of the GCC banking industry in 2023. Uh, with this, uh, I would like to ask Shankar, uh, why was 2022 so exceptional in terms of interest rate rates? Uh, <clears throat> very good afternoon to everyone. Thank you for taking time and uh, joining our initiative with the webinar. Uh, where we would like to share our thoughts on the topic of uh, increasing interest rates. This for the uh, glitches with the technology. Uh, hope I'm audible, Ajay. Uh, yes, Shankar. Good to go. Thank you. 
Once again, uh, welcome uh, everyone to this webinar and thank you Ajay for setting the context and uh, as you rightly pointed out, we have been uh, in an exceptional year of 2022 where interest rates increased by the Fed was one of the highest that we have seen in the recent past or even recent uh, memorable uh, history, I would say. We started the year somewhere at 1.5, 1.75 percentage with Fed rates and currently at uh, 4.25 target rate plus and uh, this graph very well shows that we have lived in a situation of low interest rates or very low interest rates for a while especially with the pandemic and all those uh, things happening around us and then suddenly in 2022 there was a huge spike in interest rates that came from the Fed while answering the question whether this was expected or unexpected more i would say it came from the inflation problem that uh, started in the us very high inflation levels which were probably not uh, expected by many led to this steep increase uh, by the fed in terms of the interest rates <clears throat> in terms of tackling uh, the economic uh, troubles on one side to curtailing inflation on the other the fed clearly chose to go with the path of curtailing inflation this was despite a lot of talks about recession, a lot of talks on uh, a negative impact on the economy in 2022 and so on. Clearly, we see that in 2023, uh, this could be the year where uh, Fed rates are slightly going to increase further, maybe the peak, and then uh, we come down after 2024. Uh, this is what has happened in 2022, and that's why I say it's an exceptional year of interest rate increase. If I take a look back into the history, such kind of a steep increase has happened sometime in 1978. Uh, and this was done by the US Fed as well. While we have uh, explained about this on uh, the interest rates, uh, what's happened with the Fed, we'll also have to think about what's the impact that's happening on the banks. Let us understand, let us go to the fundamental and try and understand why Fed has done this. The basic idea is that inflation has to be tamed down and then liquidity in the economy, liquidity in the banking system has to be squeezed. So any such uh, kind of steep interest rate increase is not going to be uh, that great for the banks where uh, they want to squeeze down the lending part and then deposits are also going to increase. Uh, keeping this fundamental in mind, uh, we want to analyze whether if it's the same situation for GCC banks. GCC countries, <clears throat> unlike US, where the interest rate increases were done to tackle uh, inflation, uh, here the economic fundamentals were totally different in 2022. Inflation was not that troubling and the economy was doing well with oil prices holding up. But they had to increase interest rates just because of the currency peg. Uh, Kuwait uh, being an exception, uh, all the other uh, countries' currencies are pegged to the US dollar. And Kuwait also, as we understand, uh, uh, the majority of the basket is again held with the dollar. So this uh, forced all the GCC central banks to follow the Fed and increase interest rates. With the interest rate increase, but the economic fundamentals being slightly different, we wanted to understand what was the difference in the impact on the GCC banks with this uh, slightly low inflation situation, uh, economy doing well, like we know that Saudi was one of the uh, best performing economies in 2022. With all these uh, underlying factors, uh, I thought it is good to go uh, with some of the financial analysis to understand what was the real impact of this interest rate increase on the banks in 2022. First, let's take uh, deposits. Uh, as expected, this interest rate uh, uh, increase and uh, also this uh, good economic situation that prevailed led to a good uh, growth uh, in terms of the deposits. Unlike uh, the usual expectations where credit growth would go sluggish, that was not the real case with uh, the GCC banks. Uh, on the right hand side, you can see that we have put together the aggregates uh, for GCC and uh, Credit growth did slow down, but only by a bit. Uh, one 
fact that I would like to highlight here is a little bit of skewedness that you might be seeing in the numbers for Kuwait. That comes from the fact that uh, we are showing the uh, numbers for the merged entity of uh, KFH and AUB. That's the reason. Uh, but coming back to the story, uh, both uh, deposits and credit, the impact of interest rates uh, have been different. Uh, deposits growth has been good, encouraged by a good economy and increasing interest rates, while uh, the decline in net loans, which we expect fundamentally to happen uh, when there are uh, interest rate increases, did not happen. This fundamentally comes from the fact that oil prices supported the economy, real estate sector in these economies, especially UAE and Saudi are doing good. These are the factors that have uh, helped sustain the net loan segment. Moving ahead, let's, let's also understand what was the impact on uh, the interest income and interest expense side, which is very important for us to understand what was the uh, net effect on the profitability for banks. Interest expense, as we know, with a good deposit growth and very high interest rates, has gone very steeply up, almost up by 73%, while the uh, interest income has not increased that steeply. It has gone up only by 34-35% kind of. Uh, another point that uh, I wanted to highlight here was the loan loss provisions. Loan loss provisions from the GCC banks as an aggregate has declined over the last two years, uh, has considerably uh, reduced in the last two financial years. Uh, why I want to highlight the loan loss provisions is that apart from the factors that we are analyzing on the interest income and interest expense, uh, it is also important to understand how the provisions are fun functioning, how comfortable are the GCC banks, because this also has an impact on the profitability part. Uh, Shankar, that's an interesting perspective on interest income and expenses. Uh, while we know that the US Fed rate hike would have a direct impact on uh, deposits and growth, uh, has there been any effect on investment income or uh, non-interest income on the GCC banks? Uh, thank you, Ajay. As you uh, rightly pointed out, it is also very important for us to analyze uh, the impact on the investment income and the non-interest income. Like you said, we know that there are direct impact and direct correlations when interest rates go up on, on the interest expense and interest income. But then while this is not the core business for the commercial banks, it also adds up. So uh, one thing that I have noticed is despite all the turbulence that was uh, happening in the markets in 2022, it was not a great year for uh, the global markets, both in terms of equity and in fixed income. But investment income for GCC countries have remained almost stable. There has not been a major impact on either the fee income or the investment income in the last year. I'll probably touch upon why this has happened or why this happened in the last year while I uh, analyze on how the GCC banks are positioned in terms of their investments. But again, as you rightly pointed out, we have a few components that we have analyzed on the impact of increasing interest rates. We have the interest expense, which we have spoken about, interest income, uh, which we have spoken about, the non-interest income, which is the investment and fee-based income, and the loan loss provisions. Having uh, spoken about all these things, let's see what has been the impact on the bottom line. Net income growth largely has been uh, driven by higher interest income, while we also saw a higher uh, interest expense. But provisioning for uh, the bad loans, uh, which has reduced considerably for the GCC banks, has been also one of the drivers of uh, the net income. Having uh, said all these things, we also uh, see that the net income growth has slightly dipped for the banks. This, despite all the positive effects which have come from provisioning in investment income, this uh, directly comes from the fact that there was a 72% increase in interest expenses. One thing that I would like to highlight here is GCC banks have held quite strong despite all the uh, uncertainties that have happened in the global markets. And despite the fact that we have had one of the steepest increase in policy rates in the last one year. So that's something that is uh, very, very important to uh, note and uh, considerably highlight. So a summary of how the banks have held. GCC banks in terms of profitability definitely have surpassed the pre-pandemic levels. The pandemic hit uh, definitely has gone. 
uh, however all these being said we definitely have uh, some of the challenges going ahead in terms of increasing interest rates and a couple of other factors that also which we have to uh, keep in mind while highlighting all these things i also want to bring to notice something which was some of the unusual profitability figures that uh, we noticed for the last year there were a couple of banks which had profitability growth of uh, 270% 190% 100% and so on all these numbers come from a couple of facts one is as i highlighted the loan loss provisionings have come considerably come down there was also a base year effect uh, behind this and uh, there were also considerable uh, changes in the way the accountings have happened in some cases so the factor behind this we should not assume that the increasing interest rate has led to a higher interest income for the banks which or it has led to a very high uh, growth in loans because of a positive economy if we see the numbers the growth uh, for some of the banks have been good for some of the banks it has not been that great so uh, a lot of uh, unusual items which have been accounted in the last one year was one of the reasons for this sort of an extraordinary uh, profit being reported so that's something that we have to keep in mind having touched upon this i also want to speak a little bit about how did investor perceive this situation of uh, gcc banks in the last one year let us talk about some of the large gcc banks uh, a number of banks have given negative uh, returns to the investors but if we do the same comparison for a five year performance we notice that most of these banks have generated a positive return this clearly indicates that uh, you know there has been some uh, negative sentiment among investors about this interest rate increase how the banks will be able to handle it and so on and so forth the risk matrix also have been higher for most of the banks a uh, couple of things that i would like to highlight here is that uh, the kuwait banks the large ones especially national bank of kuwait and uh, kfh uh, both of them have generated positive returns for the investors both in 2022 and uh, in the five year period and one more interesting fact is that kfh and nbk are also one of the low volatile uh, stocks uh, the least risk but generating good returns for the investors same way we have uh, we see the similar situation with mid sized banks where uh, the performance of the banks has been good in the five year period but last year has been very volatile with investor sentiment being uh, more affected and a similar trend could be observed with the small banks as well uh, however in case of small banks it's more scattered like when i have to speak of the performance of 2022 more banks are uh, have tend to go into the negative because of fears of how small banks will be able to handle this sort of a pressure on the interest rate side uh, shankar having highlighted the risks uh, how protected do you feel uh, are gcc banks and how do you see interest rates moving uh, further in 2023 and what their impact would be on uh, gcc banks right that's that's uh, th that's very important to understand for us ajay like uh, thank you for asking this question as well uh, while we have been talking about interest rates the impact of interest rates on profitability on various other metrics uh, we also want to uh, understand whether interest rates the fed funds rate has a direct impact on the uh, growth of assets in gcc banks when we did a correlation among three metrics uh, one was oil price fed rate and gcc assets growth or the bank's assets growth the correlation between fed rate and uh, the gcc bank's asset growth was not that great but one metric that really correlated well with uh, the asset growth of gcc banks was oil price probably what i am stating uh, looks more obvious uh, as it is because the economies in gcc are very much tied to oil price and that's what the data also tells us uh, oil price is a catalyst of many sectors including government spending real estate activity consumer spending the confidence of businesses and so on so that actually directly translates into how the assets growth for the banks happen having said this i also want to highlight one more thing which is very important here uh, oil price depends on multiple parameters in 2022 uh, despite all the uncertainties that have uh, gone around us 
the supply demand dynamics have somehow favored oil price to stay above an average of $80. Like we had oil prices which were hovering around 120, 130 in some parts of the year, and then it settled down somewhere below 100, but at a very comfortable spot for uh, the GCC economies. One thing that we have to note is the Fed has been tightening for the last one year very aggressively, and uh, probably the Fed will continue to tighten, which means that. Uh, we have already started seeing a couple of uh, stress in the financial sector in major economies like US and Europe. And if this continues and if there is a recession that sets in in these economies, which could be longer and probably a little bit more impactful, then definitely the uh, demand for oil will go down, which means it translates into the price uh, side as well. And when the price of oil goes down, it will definitely have a major impact on the assets growth and the profitability for GCC banks. So Fed rate, if at all, if it is not directly affecting the assets growth for GCC banks, it is definitely going to have an impact through the oil price. But one thing that we can say is that oil price uh, does not depend only on the Fed rates. There are multiple other factors in play. And coming to the next question of how protected the GCC banks are from rate hikes, we can analyze this uh, into, uh, you know, putting it into a four factor framework. One is how exposed are the GCC banks to these advanced economies, especially like US, Europe, where a lot of problems have started. And we are facing a lot of volatility in this market. The exposure of GCC banks, uh, especially to US, uh, is very minimal. It's averaging somewhere at like 5% kind of. And the maximum exposure we see is somewhere at 22%. Another step down is that the exposure of GCC banks to the US markets is all of a good high credit quality instruments. So the pressure from that side on GCC banks is again going to be limited. And then let us take how much of an accumulated loss would have happened for the GCC banks. And that portion is also less from whatever has happened in the market in the last uh, six or seven months. And the exposure of accumulated loss of all the GCC banks put together is also minimal. When I say this, uh, I also want to highlight one fact that this exposure might vary. This exposure might vary between banks, between the geographies. But as an aggregate, we see that the exposure is minimal. A third fact or a third factor that I would say is a key is the extent of external funding that's happening within the banks and the extent of their external exposure. Uh, the fact is that all GCC banks, uh, barring Qatar, are still tied very much to the local economy or the domestic economy. The extent of external funding in these uh, countries, mainly the major ones like Saudi Arabia, UAE and Kuwait is very, very minimal. So the exposure risk is again very low. The last one, or I would say the key one, is the government support. In the past, whenever there have been stress or pressure to the banking uh, industry, the government has never uh, let down. There has been immense support from the government in all means, like in terms of supporting through deposits, supporting through projects, and many other ways. Uh, the government support is a key for the strength of the GCC banks. So put together uh, with all these four factors, I would say, GCC banks are largely protected from any major uh, uh, falls that we are seeing somewhere else in the globe. So these four factors form a key or I would say like a shield that protects the GCC banks from all the external factors that are going around us. The most important uh, aspect of uh, what we wanted to cover is the expectations for 2023. How will the, how will the interest rate hike go and how will it affect GCC banks? Uh, when we have to consider how the interest rate hike would go. A few months back, uh, we all know that we were speaking about something of a target rate of 6% and SOX. But what's happened in the last few weeks has considerably uh, changed the consensus from various analysts. And we also believe that the Fed might not take a very aggressive stance uh, and uh, the rate hikes might not be steep, but will be in smaller steps. Having said that, uh, we also believe that the Fed is not going to pivot anytime soon in 2023. Uh, the pivot is most likely to happen in 2024. The rate hikes are bound to happen uh, for the 
for the year and maybe we can expect uh, the target rate to settle somewhere between 4.75 or 5 or 5 and 5.25 depending on how the fed uh, goes ahead with the rate hikes so the rate hikes are bound to happen we have to face another year of uh, high interest rate uh, situation uh, which is what most of the consensus forecast also says and the normalization is going to start somewhere or the pivot is going to start only from 2024 and probably the normalization will start somewhere late in 2024 and continue in 2025. Having said that, let's also understand what would be the impact of this high interest rate situation on the GCC uh, banks. With the high interest rate prevailing in 2022, we understand that the GCC banks have uh, managed with managed to report a better profitability with all the loan loss provision coming down and all the protections that we saw in the previous slides. However, let us sort of think of four scenarios that could happen. The two key factors for us would be what would be the terminal rate and when will the Fed pivot. Let us consider the first factor of Fed pivot some, uh, sometime happening in 23, which, which is one good factor. Uh, let us expect that the inflation is coming under control and maybe in the last quarter of 2023, uh, Fed starts reversing its course or Fed starts uh, stops increasing the uh, interest rates. The first case where we can uh, imagine is a terminal rate of in the range of 5% uh, where the tightening is not aggressive. In this case, what would happen is that credit growth probably could be a little uh, lower than what we saw in 2022 for the GCC banks. But having said that, the larger banks are well capitalized to take more deposits and uh, it would not bite too much on them. This means that the banks can still manage to register a decent level of profit, maybe even a small uptick if the course of uh, loan loss provisioning does not change. That is one factor. Uh, let us assume the next scenario where the Fed pivot is in 2023, but the terminal rate is close to 6%, which means that inflation does not come under control and uh, Fed is very aggressive in tightening the rates. In this case, uh, definitely because the aggressiveness of uh, the uh, rate increase is going to be more, we can ex expect that the credit growth might a little bit slow down, which means banks will have an impact on their interest income. And definitely deposits growth can also be expected to go up. Having said this, with uh, pivot expected in 2023, there is some positivity around uh, this scenario. And profitability for the banks might maybe slightly dip or remain flat. But uh, the recovery uh, in the situation would be much uh, better and much sooner. Coming to the next, uh, uh, next set of scenarios, which is the most likely in terms of the pivot, which is to happen in 2024. Now, we, let us consider a terminal rate of 5% for 2023 with the pivot happening in 24, which is somewhat a better scenario or a better situation still to be in. Credit growth definitely uh, would take a hit or a slight hit and then deposits will still go up. But because the pivot will happen only sometime in 24, this will definitely have an uh, impact on the sentiments. And uh, bank profitability still uh, will come under a little bit of pressure, but we can expect that it can still go flat or slightly lower than what it was in 2022. The larger banks definitely might be more resilient to this kind of a situation. But the worst situation to be in or something that most of us would not want to or the probability of this event is also low is a terminal rate of 6% and a Fed pivot in 2024. This is kind of a more aggressive situation where there is heavy pressure on the credit growth side. We would probably see a good slowdown because of the sentiment coming down and then the deposit growth being much higher. And then this will definitely bring down the aggregate profits of the banks uh, in GCC. Having uh, put together all these scenarios and uh, situations in which banks could face, one underlying factor that I would like to highlight here is that it is of oil price. It all comes under the assumption that oil will stay at somewhat a sweet spot of more than uh, $70 per barrel where it is currently in. It's kind of a sweet spot for both the GCC countries and the consumers. If this assumption does not hold good, then more pressure for the banks is likely. Like if oil prices go down, 
then it is going to pressurize the banks because of a further dampening of the credit growth where probably we'll see some sluggish activity in the real estate, real estate sector, consumer sentiments go down and so on. While this is one case, if oil prices hold up, if it goes beyond uh, 80 or $90 per barrel, then definitely we would see a much better situation for the banks and the credit growth. So this is probably a list of scenarios that we can think of for the GCC banks in 2023. Thank you. Thank you so much, Shankar, for the insightful presentation. I think it was very well summarized, especially with the possible outcomes of the Fed rates and how it would uh, impact different parameters of uh, GCC banks. Uh, and I'm very sure that uh, all of our viewers would have had a, had some very good takeaways from the session. Uh, we'll now open the floor for any uh, questions the audience uh, might have. Uh, I think currently questions are uh, disabled. Uh, We'll try to fix that uh, in a couple of minutes. And maybe then you could uh, send in your questions directly. Uh, yeah, I think it's uh, open now. Um, while the questions come in, uh, let me just take some time to give a short brief about Marmor. Uh, Marmor primarily caters to the research needs of organizations across the GCC region. Uh, our consulting services offer clients with intelligence and insights on unexplored and under-researched areas that help them take well-informed business and investment decisions. We also conduct specialized research uh, for our clients who have very specific and niche requirements. In addition, uh, we also uh, regularly develop and publish research reports and blogs that focus on infrastructure, various business sectors, uh, capital markets, and also uh, banking. Uh, maybe uh, after the webinar, we'll be sharing our uh, corporate brochure along with the recording of the session. Uh, and in case if you uh, have any research requirement or uh, consulting requirement, uh, feel free to reach out to us at uh, info at e-marmore.com, uh, which is displayed in the screen. And uh, if you're interested in any of our publications, uh, we kindly request you to visit uh, www.marmorevina.com, which is also uh, in the screen. Uh, so we'll start with the questions. Uh... Yeah, so we have one on uh, the unreported or hidden losses on HTM bond uh, portfolio. Uh, while uh, this is very tricky to uh, you know understand because as, as we know, it is hidden or unreported. But what we can say is that uh, in terms of the HTM bond portfolios, as we know, one thing we know that the exposure of the GCC banks to the external uh, uh, bond portfolio or the external uh, markets is quite minimal. While this hidden or unreported losses could crop up in the coming year or in the coming years, but then this might not move the needle in a big way when we come at, come at an aggregate level. Uh, because the exposure as an overall uh, banking system is minimal. But for individual banks, it depends on how what is the exposure, what sort of investments they have made, and uh, what what is the loss that they are facing on the on their particular uh, bond portfolios. So, as a, in in the banking system as a whole, the unreported or the hidden losses might be minimal, but the degree could vary from bank to bank, uh, from geography to geography, and also. Uh, it could have a lot of variation. Like as we said, uh, some countries like Qatar have a very high exposure. So it could definitely have some variations there. I think we have a question on the impact of US and Swiss even some GCC banks. Uh, Shankar, any uh, further thoughts? I think you discussed this in the uh, uh, exposure of GCC banks to uh, sorry, exposure of GCC banks to uh, US assets. Uh, would you like to shed more light on the same? Uh, yes, uh, sure, I can. So as I just uh, mentioned right now, right, the exposure of GCC banks to US assets as such is minimal. The average is close to 5%, but the degree varies, like the highest is 22%. So, uh, and one good thing about GCC banks is that uh, the quality of the assets that they have invested in is likely to be better compared to most of the investments uh, from what we know probably goes into the treasury bills or the government bonds or the sovereign bonds. So the risk 
of their exposure to the US uh, assets is minimal. Uh, having said that, as I said, the degree could vary uh, from bank to bank. What we have analyzed and what we are commenting on is at an aggregate level with GCC banking system as a whole. And Shankar, uh, one question from my end. Uh, in the current high interest rate scenario, uh, there's going to be a lot of pressure on the cost side for, for all the banks. So with, will this pressure be a driver for uh, digitization efforts of GCC banks or any other uh, efficiency efforts from there in? Uh, that, that's, that's a good question, Ajay. Uh, so if you, if you want to ask me if this high pressure and digitization directly have a connect, Probably no, uh, but then this kind of a high pressure environment uh, where your expenses are uh, skyrocketing, especially on the core business side, there is always a pressure to bring down the expenses on the other side and improve efficiency. And these events probably could act as a trigger where the digital efforts uh, increase. Uh, and we definitely know of some examples in GCC, especially the UAE banks, where the digital efforts are already at a good going at a very good pace so these events probably can fast track it uh, accelerate it and uh, you know put focus on uh, making more digital digitization around the core businesses of the banks which will help them to bring down the cost and uh, increase the efficiencies So th thanks a lot, Shankar, for sharing your views. Uh, with that, we'll, we would like to conclude our uh, webinar. And uh, I'd like to, uh, I think we have one last question uh, from Rupesh uh, on provisioning and uh, high uh, bank provisioning given the high inflation. Shankar, your thoughts? Uh, uh, when when it comes to bank provisioning uh, with this in this situation, right? One thing we have to notice the inflation in GCC mark, uh, economies are still under control. It's not as high as it is uh, in the US or in the Europe. Uh, the other part we have to note is that GCC banks are well capitalized. The adequacy ratios are very comfortable. The liquidity ratios are also very comfortable. And it definitely gives them some scope to bring down the provisions. But that cannot continue for uh, ever. It cannot continue for another two or three years because that would reverse the situation. Probably to manage the situation of high interest rates, banks could take that path uh, for one or uh, uh, two quarters, but then it cannot go on forever because that will always uh, have a, a negative effect on the asset quality and uh, the reliability of the banks. Uh, thank you, Shankar. Uh, so uh, we'll conclude our uh, webinar with that. Uh, and thank you to all the viewers for your participation and questions. Uh, if you have any feedback or any further questions, pe uh, please do feel free to write to us at info at e uh, So thank you once again, Shankar. Uh, everyone have a great day. Thank you. Thank you, Ajay, for uh, moderating the session. And uh, once again, I would like to thank all the participants who have taken time of their busy schedule uh, and have shown interest for the webinar. Uh, thank you all for joining. And uh, from Marmor's side, we'd be conducting a series of uh, similar webinars and uh, uh, we would be intimating you. We'll also share uh, the recording uh, with you very soon. Thank you for uh, your interest and thank you for your time. Thank you.